Let's talk about uh, Steven Garcia and Ryan Mallett. What do you think about that? Oh, hey, look at that. You want to go ahead and host the show? No. You want, want me to take it? I want you to. Oh, great. Well, hey, listen, I had Ryan Mallett this last weekend at Arkansas. You see the numbers improving each and every week? First of four home games for Arkansas are coming up. And Steven Garcia having a nice year. Backtracked a little bit versus Tennessee. Let's see what Steve Spurrier thinks about not only Steven Garcia, but about that South Carolina defense. Nice. Onions. Or the Arkansas defense. Uh, they're at times look pretty good. Obviously against Florida, they look very good. Uh, holding those guys to 20, 23 points, whatever it was. Uh, and at times they look pretty good, but they have given up some yards. Yeah, they've given up some yards, but their offense makes so many yards, and maybe their offense scores so quickly, uh, they're on the field a little bit more than than other uh, defenses. But again, uh, got an excellent pass rush, and uh, got the same defensive coordinator, same uh, sort of scheme of things. And uh, They've uh, they, they played well. Uh, anytime, just because you're near the bottom of the SEC uh, in, in some defensive categories doesn't necessarily uh, mean you're a bad defense. Uh, it just means that there's uh, somebody's got to be down there uh, near the bottom, I guess. Total defense, yeah, they are down there right now. But look at Auburn. They're number 11 in Kentucky. And uh, those guys can play some defense uh, also. Coach, do you think <clears throat> Ryan Mallett is the uh, toughest quarterback you've faced so far this season? The toughest? Well, we hadn't played him yet, so we haven't hit him enough to see if he can bounce back. But he may be the best passer. Uh, certainly, I think he's probably leading the conference in most of the passing statistics. So uh, he could be the best passer we've faced, definitely. Steve, a Culliver situation coming off the game the other night. Um, I know he had the shoulder thing. Were, were you satisfied with his effort, number one? Number two, are you are you sensing some of the same stuff well, that we, uh, juniors went through last year? Well, we had a little talk with our team that if you have an injury and you can't perform, you need to tell the coaches. And uh, if that was the biggest problem, which we think it was, and it was certainly embarrassing for all of us, and uh, we don't like it and I don't like it, and uh, hopefully that will not happen again. So that's all I need to say about it. He's not playing this week. He's not going on the trip. And uh, hopefully he'll come back next week and his shoulder will be fine and he can play like he played earlier in the year. That's what we're hoping will happen. Steve, uh, were you disappointed not just in Chris, but you had mentioned a couple other players' effort level. You know, here your, your fifth year and the ninth mm -hmm. game of the season to have that going on. It wasn't. No, it wasn't. Uh, Obviously, uh, some of his attempted tackles were glaring, but overall, no, it was it wasn't that bad. No, the, the effort was uh, decent, wasn't great, uh, but uh, hopefully we can get a little bit better as we go. Given how dinged up some of the guys are getting this point in the year, do you uh, would you be more in favor next year of having an open date earlier mm -hmm. before the last weekend of the season, the second last weekend of the season? Well, we've always been in favor of that, but uh, that's just not the way it, it works out for us. Yeah, we'd like to have one uh, in the middle of the year. and uh, But yeah, they we're, working on, we're working on changing schedule a little bit, too. Uh, a couple of years ago, we had Middle Tennessee uh, about the 10th game or something like that, 10th or 11th. And uh, sometimes that little break of not having uh, the conference, all the conference games, and then Clemson at the end, uh, I think is helpful. And I think we're working towards that. I'm not exactly sure if it's it's going to happen, but uh, again, you got to you got to play them all. And sometimes uh, uh, it happens, however it happens. So we're looking forward to this game. Uh, they're they're a good team, and they're at home, and had a big win last week, but. Uh, we feel like we can play a lot better than we've we've played recently, so we're going to try to do it. Coach, it seems the team is not responding well to adversity in, in key games. Mm -hmm. That's a continuing thing with your program. Well, I think they have responded fairly well to adversity. So, uh, you know, we've had some bad things happen. We've bounced back and won those games. Uh, but obviously we couldn't overcome the quick 21 that was up uh, last week. <clears throat> but the guys hang in, they hung in there. <clears throat> they hung in there and, and, and fought through the second half. Uh, but it uh, wasn't good enough as it turned out. <clears throat> mm -hmm. 
Coach, uh, last night, uh, Coach Wolford told us that he thought uh, Jarrell might have a, a, a slight concussion. Mm -hmm. Is Jarrell going to play this week? And what exactly is the status right now? Yeah, Jarrell, uh, his status is up in the air. Uh, they think he got bonked in the head somehow, I guess, the game uh, last week. And uh, they actually took him to the hospital Saturday night late. And he did not practice yesterday. So Kyle Nunn could be uh, there at left tackle. He and Chisholm could be the left side uh, with Lim and Garrett at center, TJ and uh, Hutch and Quentin at right tackle. So we still got eight guys who played a bit. Did, did all the tests check mm -hmm. out with him? Uh, with Jarrell? Yeah. I'm not sure yet. So uh, I think he's supposed to be there today. But I don't think he's supposed to hit anybody. So we'll, we'll, we'll follow up on that. Steve, you mentioned the um, first two fumbles Saturday uh, committed by freshmen. When you have a long season like this uh, without a break, is it more wearing on the freshmen just because of um, everything that they have to get accustomed to with the practice, travel? Well, I don't know, Rick. Uh, they held on the ball after that. You know, after that, we just had the uh, the one turnover in the second half. Steven threw the ball a little hard at Kenny on a little dump off, and it ricocheted to, to their guy. Uh, but we've been pretty good holding on the ball uh, all year. But uh, certainly the other night, Steven, Kenny, and uh, Justice Cunningham got it knocked out. So hopefully we learn to protect the ball better. Yeah, but they, they hit us right on the ball, and we flashed it right to them. So, uh, you know, got to teach our guys how to, how to protect it better. Steve, a lot of fans are like, here we go again with this end-of-season stretch. Um, at some well, point... Here we go again also with six wins and three losses right now. That's okay. right. All right, so we're not as bad off as some of you guys want to attempt to make us feel. We, well, we don't feel bad. Well, I'm trying you know, to... We got a bunch of young guys playing, and we're six and three, and uh, it could be worse. You know, a few plays here and there and some of those victories. So we're not putting any pressure on our guys. Right. Our now, guys I was try to play as hard as they can every game and our job is to get them out there and put them in position to go play. Yeah, okay, well, now, go ahead. it's a positive question. It's uh, more like, mm -hmm. can you, do, you, do you talk to your guys and say, you're a young, unique team, you don't have the past on your shoulders. At some point, do you address that and say, you know, it's, it's about right now? Well, we haven't talked about winning the SEC this year. We haven't talked about going to a major bowl or anything because uh, our, our team is a bunch of freshmen and youngsters with a few seniors, older guys here and there and uh, to me the best thing to do is to try to play pressure free there, there's no pressure on us <laughs> well there's a little pressure in that Vandy game because uh, we certainly wanted to get that sixth win right there and not have to you know try to go through uh, all these games where we're going to be underdog hey we're going to be underdog all these games you, un you know, understand that don't you so that means uh, the experts think we're not as good as the teams we're playing and whether or not they're right or not we got to go find out but uh we're looking forward to just going and playing, trying to trying to get Stephen Garcia to play a lot better. Those receivers, uh, offensive line, defensive guys. Uh, we're we're looking forward to this game. There, there's no pressure on our guys. You know, we we're not going to have a losing regular season. That's for sure. And there's a lot of teams out there that still can have one. But uh, again, we we would love to get that seventh win. We would love to get it and love to get it this week if we possibly can, and then go from there. So when South Carolina takes the football field in remembrance of Veterans Day, they are going to be sporting some of the best unis you will ever see. And we have your first look right here. Check these out. Under Armour putting together a little something with the camouflage going on. You got the Wounded Warrior Project here. This is a project that's helping raise funds for our troops from overseas after they come back home, saying that the graded casualty is being forgotten on the back of the jerseys. Different words. Courage here. Look at this. Tell me they're going to wear camo pants. An awesome. Oh, please. I mean, look, you can't see this, but this is the camouflage right here. So no names on the back. You'll have words like courage and this. Awesome. This to me is up with Army last year when they come out all camouflage. Some of the best uniforms we ever seen. I don't know about you, Jay. We're big fans of the different unis. Where do you put this one on your list? It's up there. They come out with all black pants or all camoed pants. Yeah. 
we're talking top three unis of all time. Out, outstanding. And the message is going to be great. And if they go all camo head to toe, as I said with Army a year ago, then nobody can see them. You can't be tackled. We saw the Army. Army, Army looks sweet. I mean, the Army, yeah, Army was sweet. Did. But you know, some of the tops, I mean, much as I'm not a big fan of them all the time, I, I like when uh, when Notre Dame comes out in the green. I mean, the all green for the Irish. The green hasn't treated that, that well lately. That, that, yeah. that is sweet. It hasn't. It hasn't. Yeah. But you guys didn't like the Tennessee all black. I mean, nah. the black tops this week. Nah. I thought that was sweet. And this means something. Again, wounded warrior, warriors going to a great cause for all our service men and women overseas that come back. It's not so they are forgotten, helping raising funds so they can make that transition back into society. Some of those people coming off very, very serious war injuries. I like Steve Spurrier's defense of his program. I, 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 really, I, I know that they've got a tough schedule, and everybody looks at those next three games and says, oh, they're going to finish 6-6. Six and six. I don't believe that, that that's a guarantee in any way, shape, or form. The one thing I know, and I believe most fans that have followed college football and followed South Carolina specifically would agree that this is the best offensive football team that Steve Spurrier has had since he's been there. He's made significant improvements at quarterback, significant improvements at wide receiver, and I know they're taking a lot of heat right now. I was glad he stood up for his football team and said, hey, wait a minute. You know, you know it's not like we're a bunch of chumps here. It's the best team he's had since he's been there, but this is not an offense that's scaring anybody. I don't think people are scared. They're scared at the scared wide receiver position. Scared of Alshon Jeffrey. <laughs> They're scared at the wide receiver yeah. position. And, uh, and Garcia's getting better, making better. some good throws. Better than what they've had. But better than what they've that's had. What, but yeah. you're still not talking about uh, Spurrier the offense and gun? is scaring about the everybody. Gun? Exactly. No that's, gun. But that's what they own. want. When you hire Steve Spurrier, you want points up and down the uh, yeah. football field. You want them to think you're playing basketball. Give and go, alley-oops, all this other stuff. And right now, that hasn't been the case. I will sure. give Spurrier credit for this season. He's in a good job of getting the offense out of the way and allowing the defense to win some football games for him this year. The best, biggest thing, he can't pull Garcia. He can't play mind games with Garcia. Who's he going to put in there? <laughs> he does well, like The best that. thing that happened to Spurrier as a coach, I think it's the best thing that's happened to Steven Garcia's progression. He still finds ways for the mind games. 300-yard performances and Spurrier still coming back. out. Got to play yeah, better. Things got to be a little better at the quarterback <laughs> position. It is Steve Spurrier. For week 10 of the season, and that's South Carolina at Arkansas. When you look at the numbers, do these two teams feel like they're looking in a mirror when you compare their offenses? offenses? Well, for a little while anyway, when it comes to emphasis, I mean, both of them are averaging 35 pass attempts a game. You wouldn't think that out of South Carolina. Obviously with Ryan Mallett, Bobby Petrino, you think he's going to be slinging it all over the yard. But that's kind of where the similarities end. Arkansas runs the football and they're running it better and better week in and week out. South Carolina's still struggling a little bit. But you look at the defenses as well, a little bit of disparity. You know, Arkansas's pass defense is the worst in the conference. South Carolina is one of the better pass defenses in the country. So it's an interesting matchup when you take a look at it. But I think overall, when it comes down to offense and offensive production and scoring ability, it's advantage Arkansas. One of the things that the Gamecocks have really improved upon this season is taking care of the football. They were uncharacteristically careless at Tennessee this past week, and that cost them the game. Do you think that that was a focus in practice this week? How do you fix those mistakes? Well, it's always a focus. Every team is looking at turnovers will kill you. It doesn't matter how much better you may be versus your opponent. If you turn the football over, you're giving them scoring opportunities, usually a big momentum shift, and you put your defense in a little bit of a bind. Four turnovers by South Carolina versus Tennessee. Three in the first half that led to 21 points. That's digging a pretty deep hole for any offense. South Carolina has struggled to put points on the board. They put up yards. They're the second best passing offense in the conference. But they're struggling to get the ball in the end zone. You can't afford to spot anybody in there. I said you're South Carolina and Arkansas. How do you see that one? Hey, who can figure out the Hogs, right? I, I can't this year. Gamecocks, few quality wins. But I'll take the Hogs at home. Boy, Lieutenant Curl, you're terrific. I'm taking Arkansas also. Yeah, Arkansas, I think. South Carolina just offensively yeah. uh, struggling. So I think Arkansas at home wins this game. I like Arkansas. We'll take the football first. Razorbacks have been very good in kick returns. Meanwhile, South Carolina has been very suspect in kick coverage. Dennis Johnson back to return. Third in the SEC in kickoff return average, averaging almost 30 per return. Johnson will field it at the two. And great coverage from the Gamecocks. Quinn Smith, backup safety fella. All right, first and goal, handoff. Here's Mike. We got men at the line of scrimmage. Stood up tall at the four-yard line. It'll be second. Here's Miles again, working the right side. Gets it down to about the two and a half. Nothing happening again for Miles. Freddie Brown. Third 
down at eight. Swing it near side. The green makes a man miss, and he has down to the 30. Bumped out of bounds at the 20-yard line. A missed tackle allows Boy, young quarterbacks, look at the eyes of Ryan Mallett holding coverage down the field and then dumping it off to a safety valve. Broder Green, who is excellent. Fifth reception of the year for Green. Here comes Adam on a big sweep. Adams has a couple of blockers. Cuts it inside. Touchdown, Arkansas. Yeah, he, he comes around in motion right here, and he's going to get a nice little flip from Ryan Mallett. But watch the block of DeMarcus Love pulling up, getting on the second level of the defense, and then Broderick Green with a nice little kickout block right there. Outstanding job of blocking on this play. Look at the big fella. The kick out by the running back, the big fella, DeMarcus Love. Receiver reverse and got some great blocking from the big fellas up front. And 10. Trying to hit Alshon. He does, but only a couple of and offset their size of wide out. Gamecocks will run it off right guard. Nothing happening. Maybe a yard. <laughs> They'll try to call him on this third down and 11. Mount out of the end zone. Pass caught over the middle by the tight end. D.J. Williams, a young man. Bill, as Arkansas looks at a second down. Mallet from the end zone. Big arm. Long throw to double coverage and the catch by London Crawford. Boy, you're talking, Saba. Watch this throw. Right over the outstretched hands of a couple of defenders between the safety and a linebacker working to that sideline. Boy, you could not place it. Steven Garcia with his fourth rushing touchdown of the year. Gamecocks by three. Pass caught near side. Jerry is right. Breaks a couple of tackles, and I think he picked up the first down at the 30. That handoff didn't get much. Matter of fact, might have lost a yard. That was a play call. A play action. A dump to the fullback, DeMarco, and Mo Brown missed a block. Jericho Nelson. Of the season. Four-man rush on Mallet. He'll dump it off to his tight end, Williams. Trying to break a couple of tackles, and he does. DJ Williams! To the 20, to the 10. Tripped up down to the six-yard line. Arkansas. Watch this. Nice eyes. There are the eyes in zone coverage again. A nice little peel-back block by Michael Smith. Just gets enough of him, and then it's the big fella, DJ Williams. Where have you been? for the last couple of ball games. Only had 16 receptions coming into today's game, but he is having a breakout afternoon. Tejada. It is up and good. So take a look at our quarterback comparison with Mallett, 169 yards. Defense stiffens up at the right time for, for Arkansas. Steve Spurrier, not a happy man today. And on that note, let's send it to our SEC Network Studios. Carolina leads by six points. Arkansas knocking on the door, trying to take the advantage. Correction in the way you throw the football. See what Mallet does here on the roll. Nice. That worked quite well. Lucky. Field goal last week against Tennessee. Third and short. Play fake. Perfectly done. DJ Williams down to the 10. Great call. Great execution. It'll be first and goal for the Razorbacks. Devontae Holloway fake right here. Eyes down the field. Hide the football. And then right there. Boy, the quick release of Ryan Mallett. Watch this, baby. Just bang right to DJ Williams. First and goal. Michael Smith breaks a tackle, gets it down to the right. Mallett, six foot seven frame. Into the end zone, touchdown Arkansas. Well, see guys, the SEC only had one team ranked in the top 25 for, for most of the year, not this year. I see the SEC with five, six teams in that top 25 on a regular basis. Garcia's pass nearly picked off at midfield, looking for Alshon Jeffrey. Obviously the biggest story. Well, I don't think you can overstate 
how good Jarvis Bernardo is as a defender. You see the defender getting all over. It's yes, the difference that he's played after the 26-yard pickup. It's first down and 10. Looking to the corner, Alshon Jeffrey. Is it intercepted? Yes, it is. Here come the good hands play of the day right here. Right on the outside and making a nice play. Greg Charles off to the races and dropped at the 30. Shaq Wilson's throw. Watch Ryan Mallett. Watch it right here with the eyes. Boom! Right in the hole between the corner and the safety. Big time throw. The eyes first in zone coverage, holding the safety on the hash, which gives him a chance. In motion goes Williams. Another great play fake. Now back over the middle to the tight end Williams. He's down to the one yard line. The sixth catch of the afternoon for DJ Williams. He's in motion. Out of the eye formation. It's green. Touchdown, Arkansas. Two seventy-five. Set up this touchdown run. Hogs in front. To get back in this one against Arkansas. Spins out of trouble. Can't dodge all the red jerseys. They were coming from everywhere. Loss of such a not tell, my man. I would look for eighty-eight again. Right now, Garcia needs to look for the football. Through his hand. Back at the four, it's in the end zone, covered up by Maddox. That, my friends, will be a safety. Your helmet, but if you're not expecting it, then the reaction, your reactionary time is just a little bit slow, which it gets by you. There, you, the mission is just to try to fall on the football. He misses. But right here, when the ball's on the ground, you got to make sure that you come up with it so that the safety doesn't occur. They're lucky that it's not a touchdown, Dave. Once he misses it right here, a couple of Arkansas players around it. And uh, actually, Brian Maddox does a pretty good team. With 15 minutes to play, they lead it. Garcia in the pocket. Pass batted down, nearly intercepted. Rudell Krim, his first start in the SEC on the road here at Arkansas. Garcia dropped again inside the 20-yard line. The Hawks came with some pressure. Robinson, the defensive coordinator for Arkansas today. Lanning gets the punt away. Here's Darrell Norton. Dance moves. Drop back at the 37 yard line of this football game. Green. Touchdown, Arkansas. Arkansas giving the Hogs a big lead, and Steve Spurrier can't believe it. Out of bounds as well. Garcia has time. That pass batted away. He was looking for Tory Gurley. Nothing had as his club picks up that fifth win. They go to two and four in conference play. Five and four overall. South Carolina will drop to six and four and three and four in.